All right. We're going to be taking a look here on creating supply and demand practices, and that is going to be centered around the supply and demand practice quiz that is at the bottom of the Unit 2 page, known as the supply and demand practice quiz, the S slash D of uh, SD televisions, I believe the file is called. What we have here is my supply and demand chart already uh, designed and labeled. We've got demand and supply. Make sure you label those indicators. Um, those are created by following the, the televisions, uh, the price for television, and the schedule, the supply schedule for televisions at, at homework here. If you need help doing that, let us know. All right, so we went ahead and graphed the supply curve. All right. The second question asks, what is the equilibrium price? Well, to find the equilibrium price, you need to look at exactly where those lines intersect. Right? And if you take a look closely here, you'll see that those lines intersect right here. Figure that out. That is your equilibrium. You can go ahead and label that E if you want. To find the equilibrium price, what you do is you take that intersection and you draw a line to the left to follow the price, and you'll find out that the equilibrium price is $1,200. Is $1,200. The next question asks you what is the equilibrium quantity. We find that intersection draw our dotted line down there, we find that the equilibrium quantity is 400. Okay, question four is price ceilings and price floors. This is where it gets a little more complicated. Question four says, suppose the government states of television, that they cannot be sold for more than $800 per television. Is this a price ceiling or a price floor? Well, before we even think about answering that question, the first thing we want to do is indicate that on our graph. So we find 800 over here, and we take our pen or pencil, we just draw a dashed line across the paper, or across the graph, okay? Now let's see what the question says. The government states that the televisions cannot be sold for more than $800. We've already indicated that on the graph, all right? So the maximum amount of price that a, a producer can sell a television for is $800. So think about that. If I were to jump high, I would only jump, I could only jump as high as the ceiling. Right? That's the maximum amount of height I can jump. Eventually, if I jump high enough, I'll hit the ceiling, and I can't jump any higher. Okay? So that is the maximum height I can jump. Just like $800 is the maximum price a producer can sell a television for, all right? if I jump too high, I've hit the maximum height, which is the ceiling. Just like $800 is the maximum price for a television, therefore it is a price ceiling. It is a price ceiling. It gets a little confusing because we put it at the bottom of our graph, which we'll get to in class later on. Okay, so it is a price ceiling. We demonstrated it on the graph. There it is. What does it lead to? Well, at 800, it looks like we've got about 200 televisions supplied and about 550 televisions demanded. Okay, so there's 200 televisions available, but there's 500 televisions that are wanted, so we have a shortage. We have a shortage. Go ahead and draw that shortage right there on the graph, and we label it shortage. Pen works, there we go. We label it shortage. Okay? So let's look at question five. Suppose the government states that televisions must be sold for a price of $1,600 or more. What are we doing first? We're going to draw that dash line right across the graph, just like that. We find $1,600. We draw the, the dash line right across the graph. Okay, what will this lead to? Well, before we get to that, we need to figure out if it's a price ceiling or a price floor. This is the minimum price. It says $1,600 or more. This is the minimum price it can be sold for. It is the lowest possible price. Well, if we know we can't get any higher when we get in the ceiling, we can't get any lower when we're on the floor. And that's why it is a price floor. Let's see what this is going to lead to here. We've got, if we look at 1,600, it's 1,600 on our graph. We have 200 units demanded, but we have about 550 units supplied. So there's 200 units demanded, but 550 units supplied, which is in excess of about 350 units. So we have a surplus, and that's what exists when there are price floors introduced. Okay. All right, looking at question six, I know some of you are going to have questions on this. You're going to go ahead and walk yourself through question six in terms of um, the equilibrium price and everything like that. 
you go ahead and just draw the lines. There is no schedule. Just go ahead and walk, you, walk yourself through it. Start with that equilibrium price at, at 22. Okay, assume that only, now what we're going to do here is we're going to make the lines dance a little bit. Okay, pay no attention to the numbers on the side here. We're just going to go ahead and draw our graph. We're going to label it supply and demand. Our, our equilibrium price for this case will be 22. Okay. 21, 20, 23, 24, 25. Okay. It says Old Navy has decided to change the price of their product to 25. All right. What's going to happen here? How are we going to show that on the graph? How are we going to show that on the graph? Well, what happens here is that this is the equilibrium price. This is what's going to happen. Okay. But the price up here is going to be 25. So just like a price floor, we draw that dashed line across our graph at $25. Okay, so that's how we indicate this on the graph, is we draw that dashed line across it. Right. What problem exists? We have a surplus, right? Because we have all this area up here, it's a surplus. What's going to, the market's going to do to change it? What do you think is going to happen? Supply's going to get so much that demand will eventually go, go down or they'll change their price. Okay? All right, let's look at question F. <clears throat> now assume the employees negotiate a pay raise. What do you think is going to happen? Well, the same price, those, those jeans that were cost $22 at the equilibrium price, forget about the $25 for now, are now going to cost a little bit more, right? Because one of the factors of production, labor, has negotiated a pay raise. So the price of jeans is going to increase. So what's going to happen to that supply line? It's going to shift to the left. Remember, increase left, decrease right. It's going to shift to the left. And our new equilibrium price will be about $23, $24, somewhere in there. Okay. What happened to the equilibrium price? It went up. What happens when prices go up, all things being considered to quantity? It went down. Okay. If you have any questions, just go ahead and drop me an email, drop Mr. Cherico an email, or we'll go ahead and take care of them in class. This is just to get you to walk through price floors and price ceilings and look at market issues. So we'll take care of this later tomorrow, but we hope that helped you with your homework tonight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow in class.